Imagine inventing the first functional computer 300 years before Bill Gates or Steve Jobs were born. Imagine creating a new branch of mathematics just to solve a betting problem with a friend. That was Blaise Pascal, a man who lived in constant physical agony, died young, but left a legacy that defines everything from the tire pressure in your car to the risk theory that governs the world economy. But who was the man behind the theorems? Today, we'll meet the genius who tried to calculate the incalculable, the very existence of God. The Greatest Mathematicians of All Time Episode 33 Blaise Pascal Blaise Pascal was born on June 19, 1623, in Clermont, present-day Clermont-Ferrand, Auvergne, France, and died on August 19, 1662, in Paris. Blaise Pascal was the third of Etienne Pascal's children and his only son. Blaise's mother died when he was only three years old. In 1632, the Pascal family, Etienne and his four children, left Clermont and settled in Paris. Blaise Pascal's father had unorthodox educational views and decided to teach his son himself. Etienne Pascal decided that Blaise was not to study mathematics before the age of 15, and all mathematics texts were removed from their house. Blaise, however, his curiosity raised by this, started to work on geometry himself at the age of 12. He discovered that the sum of the angles of a triangle are two right angles, and, when his father found out, he relented and allowed Blaise a copy of Euclid. At the age of 14, Blaise Pascal started to accompany his father to Mersenne's meetings. Mersenne belonged to the religious order of the Minims, and his cell in Paris was a frequent meeting place for Gassendi, Roberval, Carcavi, Auzo, Maidorge, Milan, Desargues, and others. Soon, certainly by the time he was fifteen, Blaise came to admire the work of Desargues. At the age of sixteen, Pascal presented a single piece of paper to one of Mersenne's meetings in June 1639. It contained a number of projective geometry theorems, including Pascal's mystic hexagon. In December 1639, the Pascal family left Paris to live in Rouen, where Etienne had been appointed as a tax collector for Upper Normandy. Shortly after settling in Rouen, Blaise had his first work, Essay on Conic Sections, published in February 1640. Pascal invented the first digital calculator to help his father with his work collecting taxes. He worked on it for three years between 1642 and 1645. The device, called the Pascaline, resembled a mechanical calculator of the 1940s. This, almost certainly, makes Pascal the second person to invent a mechanical calculator, for Schickard had manufactured one in 1624. There were problems faced by Pascal in the design of the calculator, which were due to the design of the French currency at that time. There were twenty sols in a livre and twelve deniers in a sol. The system remained in France until 1799, but in Britain a system with similar multiples lasted until 1971. Pascal had to solve much harder technical problems to work with this division of the livre into 240 than he would have had if the division had been 100. However, production of the machines started in 1642, but, as Adamson writes, by 1652, 50 prototypes had been produced, but few machines were sold, and manufacture of Pascal's arithmetical calculator ceased in that year. 
Events of 1646 were very significant for the young Pascal. In that year, his father injured his leg and had to recuperate in his house. He was looked after by two young brothers from a religious movement just outside Rouen. They had a profound effect on the young Pascal and he became deeply religious. From about this time, Pascal began a series of experiments on atmospheric pressure. By 1647, he had proved to his satisfaction that a vacuum existed. Descartes visited Pascal on 23rd September. His visit only lasted two days, and the two argued about the vacuum, which Descartes did not believe in. Descartes wrote, rather cruelly, in a letter to Huygens after this visit, that Pascal has too much vacuum in his head. In August of 1648, Pascal observed that the pressure of the atmosphere decreases with height and deduced that a vacuum existed above the atmosphere. Descartes wrote to Karkavi in June of 1647 about Pascal's experiments, saying, it was I who two years ago advised him to do it, for although I have not performed it myself, I did not doubt of its success. In October 1647, Pascal wrote New Experiments Concerning Vacuums, which led to disputes with a number of scientists who, like Descartes, did not believe in a vacuum. Etienne Pascal died in September 1551, and following this, Blaise wrote to one of his sisters, giving a deeply Christian meaning to death in general, and his father's death in particular. His ideas here were to form the basis for his later philosophical work, Pensee. From May 1553, Pascal worked on mathematics and physics, writing Treatise on the Equilibrium of Liquids, 1653, in which he explains Pascal's law of pressure. Adamson writes, This treatise is a complete outline of a system of hydrostatics, the first in the history of science. It embodies his most distinctive and important contribution to physical theory. He worked on conic sections and produced important theorems in projective geometry. In The Generation of Conic Sections, mostly completed by March 1648 but worked on again in 1653 and 1654, Pascal considered conics generated by central projection of a circle. This was meant to be the first part of a treatise on conics, which Pascal never completed. The work is now lost, but Leibniz and Chernhaus made notes from it, and it is through these notes that a fairly complete picture of the work is now possible. Although Pascal was not the first to study the Pascal Triangle, his work on the topic in Treatise on the Arithmetical Triangle was the most important on this topic, and through the work of Wallace, Pascal's work on the binomial coefficients was to lead Newton to his discovery of the general binomial theorem for fractional and negative powers. In correspondence with Fermat, he laid the foundation for the theory of probability. This correspondence consisted of five letters and occurred in the summer of 1654. They considered the dice problem, already studied by Cardan, and the problem of points, also considered by Cardan, and around the same time Pacioli and Tartaglia. The dice problem asks how many times one must throw a pair of dice before one expects a double six, while the problem of points asks how to divide the stakes if a game of dice is incomplete. They solved the problem of points for a two-player game, but did not develop powerful enough mathematical methods to solve it for three or more players. Through the period of this correspondence, Pascal was unwell. In one of the letters to Fermat written in July 1654, he writes, 
though I am still bedridden, I must tell you that yesterday evening I was given your letter. However, despite his health problems, he worked intensely on scientific and mathematical questions until October 1654. Sometime around then, he nearly lost his life in an accident. The horses pulling his carriage bolted, and the carriage was left hanging over a bridge above the River Seine. Although he was rescued without any physical injury, it does appear that he was much affected psychologically. Not long after, he underwent another religious experience, on 23 November 1654, and he pledged his life to Christianity. After this time, Pascal made visits to the Jansenist monastery, Port Royal de Champs, about 30 kilometers southwest of Paris. He began to publish anonymous works on religious topics, 18 provincial letters being published during 1656 and early 1657. These were written in defense of his friend Antoine Arnaud, an opponent of the Jesuits and a defender of Jansenism, who was on trial before the Faculty of Theology in Paris for his controversial religious works. Pascal's most famous work in philosophy is Passé, a collection of personal thoughts on human suffering and faith in God, which he began in late 1656 and continued to work on during 1657 and 1658. This work contains Pascal's wager, which claims to prove that belief in God is rational with the following argument. If God does not exist, one will lose nothing by believing in him, while if he does exist, one will lose everything by not believing. With Pascal's wager, he uses probabilistic and mathematical arguments, but his main conclusion is that we are compelled to gamble. His last work was on the cycloid, the curve traced by a point on the circumference of a rolling circle. In 1658, Pascal started to think about mathematical problems again as he lay awake at night, unable to sleep for pain. He applied Cavalieri's calculus of indivisibles to the problem of the area of any segment of the cycloid and the center of gravity of any segment. He also solved the problems of the volume and surface area of the solid of revolution formed by rotating the cycloid about the x-axis. Pascal issued a challenge offering two prizes for solutions to these problems to Rennes, Laloubert, Leibniz, Huygens, Wallace, Fermat, and several other mathematicians. Wallace and Laloubert participated in the competition, but Laloubert's solution was wrong, and Wallace also failed. Sluice, Ricci, Huygens, Wren, and Fermat communicated their findings to Pascal without participating in the competition. Wren was working on Pascal's challenge and in turn challenged Pascal, Fermat, and Roberval to find the arc length of the cycloid. Pascal published his own solutions to the problems of the challenge in the letters to Karkavi. After that, he showed little interest in science and spent his last years helping the poor and going from church to church in Paris, attending one religious service after another. Pascal died at the age of 39 in intense pain after a malignant tumor in his stomach spread to his brain. In his work, Blaise Pascal, Mathematician, Physicist, and Thinker on God, Basingstoke, 1995, D. Adamson describes him as a man of frail build, loud voice, and somewhat authoritarian manners. He lived most of his adult life in great pain. He always had fragile health, suffering from migraines since he was young. His character is described as precocious, stubbornly persevering, perfectionist to the point of being implacable, but seeking to be gentle and humble. R. Tatton, in Dictionary of Scientific Biography, New York, 1970-1990, presents the following assessment. Simultaneously a physicist, mathematician, and eloquent publicist in the Provinciales, Pascal felt constrained by the abundance of his talents. 
it has been suggested that his excessively concrete inclination prevented him from discovering infinitesimal calculus, and in some of the provinciales, the mysterious relationships of human beings with God are treated as if they were a geometric problem. But these considerations are largely outweighed by the benefit he derived from the multiplicity of his gifts, his religious writings are rigorous due to his scientific training. Pascal said that the heart has reasons that reason itself does not know. He spent his life trying to balance these two forces, the relentless precision of numbers and the infinite abyss of the human soul. He taught us that science is not only for dominating the world, but for understanding our fragile place within it. If the story of this tormented genius touched you, or if you have already used Pascal's triangle without knowing who he was, please like this video. This helps our community grow. And I ask you, was Pascal greater as a mathematician or as a philosopher? Write your opinion in the comments, subscribe to the channel and activate the bell, because the history of mathematics is the history of humanity. Until next time.